Another approach that's become very popular in the United States is a so-called multi-site or sometimes satellite church plant. Now, some people would say this is really not church planting, uh, but um, mo many of you may not be familiar with what, what this means. But basically, uh, the idea is that you have a strong, usually it's a strong central church, and instead of having a daughter church, which eventually becomes an autonomous church on its own, with its own leadership, its own budget and everything, basically they start another venue where they have worship services, but that remains a part of the central church. In other words, they say one church, many locations. So you may have your central church that has its worship, and then you say, well, here's a community. We'd like to start something. We have some people who live there. We will start a Sunday morning service there, but they will remain under the leadership of the mother church. They will remain under the budget of the mother church. All the decisions that will be made, pretty much most of the decisions will be made by the central church. And so you have these satellites, but they're really all linked in. They don't become autonomous churches on their own. They're still linked under the leadership, the guidance, the authority, the governance of the mother church. Very typically, then, these off-site locations often have video sermons. In other words, the mother church has the very gifted preacher, and then the sermon will be recorded. Maybe it's a Saturday night service or maybe even the week before. They'll video record that service. And then at the site for their sermon, they'll have their own worship time of singing and, and so on. But then the sermon, well, they turn on the, the uh, video projector and, and you have your, your sermon on, on this video screen. And uh, now some people find that a little peculiar to have a preacher on, on television, so to speak, at church. Um, but surprisingly enough, people get used to it. And a lot of people say, well, I'd rather have a good sermon on the video screen than a not so good sermon with a live preacher. Now, one of the other things about the multi-site idea is it's sort of like franchising a business. Well, everybody's heard of McDonald's. Um, and one of the things is about a franchise is you know that whether you go to McDonald's in Moscow or whether you go to McDonald's in Paris or whether you go to McDonald's in New York, you know what you're going to pretty much get. Now, they might have a little bit of different sauce that they serve in one place and then they serve in another. But basically, what the franchise idea is that you've got consistent quality. And you can always count on that quality wherever you go. You know what you're going to get. So the multi-site idea says, look, our, our central church, we really do church well. We know how to reach people. We have solid ministry. We have a way of training our leaders and on and on. So why not sort of franchise that and reproduce that same concept, that same quality, the same philosophy of ministry at another location. But the only way we can really guarantee that that's going to be the same quality and the same uh, type of values is to keep that centralized uh, governance and control. Now, some churches who have done this multi-site approach, they have taken the approach that says, um, we are going to have not only video sermons. Sometimes we'll have the, the pastor will preach in the central church and then one, the next Sunday he might preach in the other church. Some of these localized uh, off-sites will have their own uh, pastor who does pastoral care for the people in that church. And then that person may also preach on occasion. So there's different ways to do it. The real pioneers in this approach was Community Christian Church in Naperville. Now many, many, there are literally thousands of churches in the United States doing this. And in fact, internationally, when I was in, in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, in Africa, I heard of a multi-site church that had, I think, five different sites that were doing multi-site in Africa. But they were the pioneers in this. And uh, they actually have, uh, don't have video sermons at all their locations, but there will be local preachers but they all preach on the same topic. And the preachers will meet together early in the week and they'll talk about the topic for the week. 
And so even though it's not the exact same sermon, they're having the same ethos, the same material being worked on. Now, they have grown from five, the church was started in 1989, to 5,000 in that span of time. In roughly 20 years, they grew like that. They have 14 Chicagoland area sites, but the central, uh, central uh, joint leadership. They had over 370 baptisms in 2012. So they're reaching lost people. They're reaching new people. They're not just recruiting Christians from other churches. They're reaching new people. And so here's sort of a map of, of, uh, from their web page of where their different churches are. Uh, to just give you a little bit of a feel, you're probably talking uh, from the lake over there all the way over to here where most of their churches are. This would be uh, probably a 45 minute drive with a car. Um, it's probably uh, 30, 40 miles. So you're talking about a pretty large area of the city where they are uh, planting these multi-site locations. Um, one of the things that they have done, which has been very powerful in uh, creating these multi-sites, is what we've been saying over and over again. You've got to train up the leaders to do this. They even have their own school for worship leaders. They've written a book called Exponential. And uh, so it's in English. If you're interested in hearing more about how they've done this, it's a fascinating story. And uh, it will come up over and over again about how they are they're empowering local people, lay people who might have never thought they'd be involved in Christian ministry, training those people up, training up young worship leaders, um, because uh, this is a key element of their ministry. They feel you've got to have good worship at these off-site locations, and so they train up their own worship leaders. And um, so it's a, it's a very interesting story, the way they have had a ministry of empowerment to be able to reproduce churches and locations as they've done. So we're going to stop at that point for today, and we will pick it up next time with um, some more. Uh, actually, I, I take that back. Let me say a few more things about multi-site, uh, and then we'll end, okay? Because then, then we'll just conclude this thing. So a couple more words here about multi-site. Uh, multi-site is a way to reproduce churches. To summarize what I've been saying, it replicates the philosophy and quality of ministry. It's sort of like that franchise idea. It reaches more people, but often it's the same kind of people. So if we go back to the example of McDonald's, not everybody likes McDonald's, right? Um, some people like it, some people don't like it. Well, most of these churches, they have the same kind of style. They have the same kind of preaching. And so they reach more people in numbers but it's very consistent, the same style. They're not going to probably reach a lot of different kind of people. It also depends on a fairly high level of professionalism. You have to have technology to be able to record video sermons, and you've got to have projectors to, to show them. And um, it, there's a lot more organization involved. And so uh, you do need a greater level of professionalism. It requires resources. You have to have cameras if you're going to have video recordings and, and to get the color right and to get the projectors right. And, and um, if you're going to have uh, worship bands, you've got to have musical instruments. It can be pretty expensive uh, to launch a multi-site. Some people criticize it for empire building. In other words, there's a pastor who just wants more people to hear his sermons and just wants his church and his influence to get bigger. Whether that's valid or not, you know, the Lord sees the heart. I suppose that's a temptation. Um, but uh, it has been a critique point that sometimes has led. The bigger question is, what's going to happen when that very gifted pastor is no longer there? Will all these sites be able to continue when they don't have their favorite preacher that they get to hear? It adds churches, but it rarely multiplies. Now, CCC Neighborville has actually multiplied in that they have sent people, as I mentioned, to Kansas City or to other cities, I believe to Denver also, to actually start other multi-site movements in other cities. And in that sense, they really have gone to multiplication. 
But usually you have sort of a central church and it adds a, a site here, it adds a site there. It doesn't really multiply much. And so I compare it to navel oranges. Um, maybe you don't know what a navel orange is, but a navel orange is an orange that is unique because it doesn't have any seeds. The only way you can reproduce navel oranges is by grafting a branch from another tree that grows in navel oranges to grow more oranges because there's no seeds to plant new trees. And so I kind of compare the multi-site to the same idea. You keep replicating the same thing over and again, but you usually don't end up planting autonomous churches. So that's a limitation to that approach. Grapefruit, fruit has no seeds, so it can't multiply. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the Kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.